الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله تعالى ونحن نستطيع من الشابتر أفتر البوك من الحد من البوك من الشاركين وتوضيح الفقه في الدين very simple and short the matters of fiqh and what is meant is just to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to make sure that we worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala on real evidences uh, so we need to know the matters of fiqh matters of jurisprudence as they say and the chapter after kitab al-hajj starting the matters of transactions so it's kitab al the book of buyu' or buying and selling or transactions. The mu'amalat in general or transactions is basically the second half of matters of fiqh. Since the first half is about the five pillars of Islam, matters of worship, which is the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that comes first, that is mandatory for every Muslim to know, the salah and so on. Then the second half is matters of transactions uh, and rulings of marriage and so on and so forth which is also uh, very important for every Muslim to know especially for those who deal with contracts and buying and sellings especially the time that we live in when things become very complex and it's not enough for a person to say that I do not know I have no knowledge uh, because knowing for a fact that most of contracts most of it if a person is not aware of the rulings, who doesn't ask a person of knowledge, he would indulge in one way or the other of haram dealings with riba or other than riba. So it is not an excuse to say I have no knowledge. A person has to either seek the knowledge or ask the people of knowledge. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ As the people of knowledge, if you do not know. And the chapter of a riba which is always related to matters of the or buying and selling, is not an easy chat. It needs studying and it needs a person to have, uh, you know, comprehensive knowledge about it. And that's why the Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he mentioned there is no excuse for someone not knowing in matters of living because it's not easy anyway. So for someone so to say, I do not have the knowledge of it, it's, uh, it's not an excuse. Because the matter is so widespread, and people would fall into riba if uh, they're not aware of the rulings of buying and selling and so on. So uh, whether a person has to have the knowledge or always ask a person of knowledge to avoid falling into what brings the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while studying this, it's important to sometimes mention the wisdom behind some of these rulings because it's not meant for the life of the people, for example, to be difficult. It's the total opposite. These rulings in matters of transactions, which is opposite to how it was in Ibadat, everything is permissible in matters of transactions. This is a, a very important principle. Everything is permissible unless proven otherwise. Unless there's an evidence in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that it's haram. That's in buying and selling. This is a very general ruling in this. In Ibadat, it's the opposite. Everything is haram. You cannot initiate or make a matter of worship unless. You have the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But buying and selling, if people invented a way of buying and selling, should we tell them, no, you bring the evidence that this is permissible? No, it's permissible. Everything, anything that people do in buying and selling is all halal, no problem. Unless it falls into one of the categories of haram. And what is haram uh, is to protect the people from what is more evil. To protect the, the people from uh, taking money that is not the right for them to take, that would lead to enmity, that would lead to all kinds of evil things as a result of this. And people suffer a great deal as a result of being away from the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brings all means of justice and mercy and that things are, are, are far more than just making money and being wealthy. Uh, there is something the human uh, element here has to be observed and honesty and truthfulness and to care for one another and, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is a subject of fiqh anyway, so we just say it briefly, inshallah ta'ala, and if there's any questions, please keep it at the end, because there's so many questions. Every time we talk about matters of transactions, 
you won't even find, finish one sentence unless you will find many questions and many situations and so on. So just be patient, inshallah, we'll leave at the end 10 minutes or so for questions, inshallah. So he says, Kitab al the book of al uh, the plural of Bay'ah. Bay'ah is uh, buying and selling. al uh, aslu fihi, as he says, Shurut al the conditions for al or the condition for it to be valid. He says, al aslu fihi, the rules in it, or the principle in it, al hil that everything is halal. Buying and selling is halal. This is al asl, meaning that any means of buying and selling, anything that is buying and selling is halal. Everything. Unless proven otherwise. Qala ta'ala wa ahalla Allahu al wa harram al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made al halal and he forbade al riba And the ulama talked about what is bay'ah. What is the definition of bay'ah? And they will give definitions. But the definition of it is what people agreed upon that this is buying and selling. Right? So you would have, uh, you exchange one means of wealth with another uh, for something benefiting. Whether it's, it doesn't have to be money for goods, it can be goods for goods. It can be gold for something, it can be silver for something. You exchange and This is something that is needed in the lives of the human beings. You need something with someone else and he needs something from you. So you exchange that, and you would benefit, both sides would benefit. And what people agreed upon with matters of money and wealth, they would purchase with their wealth what they are in need of, and this is how people live their life. So it basically has to do with two parties, two sides, and they both benefit by exchanging something. So this is halal, unless in certain situations where it's not permissible, as it will come, inshallah ta'ala. And all the things that are forbidden, you would find them under three or four categories only. From the hadith of the Prophet. ﷺ. So he says, فَجَمِيعُ الْأَعْيَانِ مِنْ عَقَارٍ وَحَيَوَانٍ وَأَثَاثٍ وَغَيْرِهَا يَجُوزُ إِقَاعُ الْعُقُودِ عَلَيْهَا إِذَا تَمَّتْ شُرُوطُ الْبَيْنِ جميع الأعيان. Anything that has uh, uh, that is being bought and sold, something that is physical, whether it's a building or animals or furniture or anything, right? You can make a contract if the conditions of al bay or the conditions of buying is met. فَمِنْ أَعْظَمِ الشُّرُوطِ The most important, or from among, among the most important conditions for buying and selling to be halal, الشَّرْطُ الْأَوَّلْ The first condition, الرِّضَى الرِّضَى means pleasure or pleased or satisfaction. And the opposite of that is when someone is coerced to do something. So الرِّضَى meaning that a person is pleased, he's satisfied, he's not being coerced to give up something uh, from himself, to give his money by force, for exchange of something else or vice versa, no, it's, uh, he do that willingly. So that's what al-rida is. The Holy Taala illa takuna tijaratan an taradim minkum. Unless it's a tijara trade, an taradim minkum from uh, means of satisfaction or people are pleased willingly. People would do that uh, from their own will. So if a person is forced, does that transaction is is valid then? And that's one of the uh, the things that the ulama talk in matters of. Al-bay, they call it bay al <coughs> Is it valid or not? Bay al is when someone is forced to sell something, otherwise they will take it away from him. Not necessarily that they make him sell on a gun, gun shot, but say for example they're going to take all different, or his wealth, he knows that it's going to be taken away from him. If he goes, for example, uh, from one place to the other, his customs. For example, they will take his money away, or his goods that he got, they will take him away. So, especially from him, but if it's from someone else, they will take it, you know, something like that. So he would uh, make some form of a contract to sell this thing that he has to someone else, that it would be okay for him to have it, but not that one person, so that he would, you know, um, get away with his money. So is this dealing valid or not? Because there's no riddah here, there's no uh, willingness here, there's no satisfaction here. So the Rabbi talked about this issue, whether it's permissible or not, whether it's valid or not. A person, if it's forced, then it's not bad, right? So uh, again, at riba, this is a very important one, not for a person to be coerced to sell something that he doesn't want to sell or to want. <coughs> the second condition, <laughs> 
that the condition for the buying and selling to be valid is there is no gharar and jahala in it. And this is why itself, with, if we discuss a gharar or jahala in details, that covers almost most of the, uh, the matters of buying and selling. And most of the things that are forbidden is because of these two things, either the gharar or jahala. Gharar means uh, deception, uh, and jahala is ignorance. How, what that means, and he gives some examples, but what it means is if a person is buying something that is not clearly uh, mentioned in detail, something hidden there, there's something that he doesn't know every single detail of it, or it's totally uh, ignorant that a person doesn't know what he's buying. For example, and this is something that I do, uh, very common, when people would say, buy what's in this truck. They do that here. Uh, a truck full of stuff, full of things. Phones, clothes, whatever there is, wires, and it's closed. He cannot open it. And they would bid on what's in the truck, right? So uh, whoever has the highest bid, he gets what the, what the truck has. It might be a great deal, might be not a very good deal. That's not permissible because the, where is this? This is Jihad, this is, he does not know what he's buying. And he mentioned some of the examples that he so anything that is not known, anything that is not clear what a person is buying, and that's why, for example, which is again, we leave the questions at the end, uh, why the contract of insurance is not permissible in Islam? Because you're not buying something concrete, you're not buying something very clear. You're buying something in the future that you have no idea what it is. You might get a lot of money from the other side, and you might not get nothing for years and years. And that's why insurance is aqd gharar. It's based on gharar, based on something that is not clear what benefits you're going to get. So when, for example, you're, 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 uh, you're, this, is the, this is the original ruling of the contract. And again, I know that there's going to be many questions, but just be patient with each other until, until just a few minutes. So the, the insurance means that you're uh, basically purchasing what? Say, for example, health insurance, right? You're purchasing nothing. You're purchasing something in the future. If you get sick and you go to the doctor, you go to the hospital, then they will pay for you. In return, you pay something monthly. Right? So the other side is benefiting and making profit. Or you might be making profit, but nobody knows when and how. So a person pays one month or life insurance. Right? He pays one, only one month only. Paid $100 and that person died. His family gets $5 million. Where did they get the five million from? How can they justify this? Or a person pays for years and years, like so much money over than what he would benefit from if something happens like in the car insurance and so on. So the original ruling of such contract to, for people to make money and to benefit from one another, it's all based on gharab, based on deception, things are not clear. But if people do it as a way of a good deed, helping one another, no problem. Then the insurance contract becomes permissive. And the, the way that is done, say for example, the Muslims in St. Louis will all agree that they would have some form of insurance, uh, they call it ta'awuni, helping one other matters of goodness, and they can specify. Say for example, they would do car insurance, or life insurance, no problem. Each person among those who will participate will pay every month $100, right? And if someone dies, they all pay the $100 and it's put in an account, they can invest the account they can keep it without being invested as long as, of course, the investment is halal and so on. And they will specify one only these participants. If someone died, for example, right, if this is what the insurance is for, then we will give them that much. Nobody is making money. Nobody is profiting. Right? There's no one person behind them and office making big money of this. It's all people helping one another, you know, in times of emergencies or times of uh, difficulties. The same thing can be with whatever kinds of insurance people do. This is a matter of helping one another, no problem. But once there's a benefit, right, and there's a transaction here with someone would make money off of someone else, like this, this is all deception. And that's why you would find the outcome of it is always very complicated. Make things not real, the prices of it becomes extremely high, and then the people that deal with these things I know very well. And you open the door for all kinds of frauds, Right? And the other people would, would uh, you know, have this and, 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 and taste the burden of it. 
someone he doesn't like his car, he just, you know, Shaitan whispers to him, run the car against the wall, you get the insurance, right? And people make themselves, whenever an accident happens, lying about the you know accident reports and everything, that they cannot live their life anymore so that they can get cash in the great money. And who would suffer is the rest of the people who are part of the church because they, you know, increase the prices on them. So it's all forms of deception. It's not something, it's, it's all against truthfulness and honesty and, and helping one other matters of goodness. So this is again the country. For example, if a country or the government would do this to the people, no problem, it's halal. Because the government is not making money off of this. This is all for the people, right? As long, of course, that it's done with the rest of the conditions in a right way. So again, this is just an example with gharab and jahala. What's the difference between the two terminologies, gharab and jahala? Because they both kind of uh, sound the same. One is more general than another. So if a person uh, do something intentionally, buy something intentionally, hiding something, right? This is gharab. If something that is not intentional, but it's uh, deceiving or has something hidden in it, this can be under the category of uh, al-jahal. So that's why he says from the examples, فَيَدْخُلُ فِيهِ بَيْعُ الْآبَكِ Selling uh, the slave, an abak is the one that running it, he ran away, right? So he's selling a slave that does not exist, he's not present, he, he just fled, right? Was shared, an animal that, you know, escaped. So he had an animal, he had a camel, for example, or a horse, and the horse ran away. So he would sell that horse to someone else. You know, if, if you find it, it's yours. What if you don't find it? Well, يَقُولْ بِعْتُكَ إِحْدَ السِّلْعَتَيْنِ Or he would say, I sell to you one of the two goods. He has two things, but he doesn't specify which one. I just give you one. And while they're doing the contract, the buyer, he doesn't know exactly which one he's going to get it, whatever. Right? So this is not clear. The matter is not clear. And that comes with it also. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, When a person would sell two transactions in one. Meaning, when people, again I will get into some details but very quickly, you go buy something with two prices. If you pay now cash, it's $100. If you pay over a year, it's 150 And it's left like this. So this is more than one transaction. This is more than one price to it. So the person, for example, he would choose the 150 over a year, right? And then he leaves. He comes the next day, he gets some money. You want to pay off the whole thing, you will get it for a hundred. That means it's not one price that they agreed upon, it's more than one price, more than one transaction. But if they're negotiating and they're sitting, buying and selling, and he says, well, if you give me now the money, it's a hundred, if you want to give it over a year, it's 150, which one would you like? He said, I'll take the 150. And they agreed that the price of whatever he's selling is 150. This is one price. If he comes tomorrow with all of the money, it's 150. Right? Not 101 or 102 because it's one day or 10% over one year and if he comes early, this and that. It's only one fixed price and that's it. If a person, if the seller later on, because this becomes a debt, right? If he wants to forgive but not something specified in the contract, if he wants to forgive, it's his own will, his own goodness, but nothing to be specified in the contract that if you come early, I would, you know, let you uh, this amount of all this. So again, this is another example. Uh, like, this is one of the ways that they would sell things. How, uh, for example, purchasing a piece of land, right? Take a piece of stone and throw it. As far as the, uh, the stone can go, this is your land, right? Uh, and the price is this. Right? People can do something, they can invent things like this. This is, of course, it's not clear what they are buying, right? أو ما تحمل أمته أو شجرته Or uh, what, what whatever he has carries, like whatever, whether it's his his uh, Amma, his slave, or his uh, animal, or whatever the tree has, tree or apple tree, I will purchase whatever in the tree with that much. He doesn't know how many apples, how many, what is the weight of it. Things are not clear, so it's not permissible. Or what's inside of the pregnant camel or the pregnant uh, sheep or goat. Whatever in it, I will buy whatever inside. 
He doesn't know what's inside. He doesn't know if, if she's going to give birth or not, and so on. وَالسَّوَاءُ كَانَ الْغَرَرُ فِي الثَّمَنْ أَوْ أَوْ مُثَمَّنْ Whether الْغَرَرُ or deception is in the price or in the good itself. Both has to be clear. So the price has to be clear, a fixed price. Not like I will buy it. Uh, just give me the thing and, and, and we'll deal with it later. Sometimes people do this in, in some you know, cases for taxis, for example, back home. Right? You, you get into a taxi and you don't agree on the price. Right? Uh, everything will be okay, don't worry. Come on in. Right? And then at the end, they big fight. Because he wants this and he wants that. They should agree in the beginning on the price. The same thing people might because they like each other and so on. Uh, I want to purchase your car, no problem, we're just brothers for the sake of I'll just take the car now, inshallah, you're, it's your car. And they buy and sell. Buying and selling, you don't have to pay anything. You can just agree with, with each other that this is, it's my car, it's my car. I purchase the car, you purchase the car. And don't worry about the money, inshallah, we'll, you know, tomorrow we'll talk about it. Now he purchases the car and then tomorrow comes, and he thinks that he's going to get it to his own price, and then when it comes to money, the talk will change. Then it becomes not very clear. So the thaman, the price has to be clear, and whatever he is selling also has to be clear. And that's why we have to make sure things on the internet, for example, it's permissible to buy and sell on the internet, but the ghar has to be uh, relieved totally. You cannot buy something that you don't know what you're buying. Fish in the water, uh, bird on the, on the tree, you know, things like this. It has to be very clear. That's why if it's something that you're purchasing from the internet, and it's been described, specifications of it, everything is clear, and any defects in it is mentioned, and all of this, then no problem. But if it's not clear, then it's not permissible to purchase, and if it comes and it has a defect and it was not mentioned, then the person has the right to return it, and so on. So this is a very important uh, condition. We'll take just one uh, condition, because there are more conditions to be mentioned. Uh, just the third one, and then we'll We'll stop at this point for the questions, inshallah ta'ala. He says the third condition, so the first condition is what? So we remember? Rida. Uh, the second one is, that we just mentioned, no ghara, no jihad, no deception, no deceiving, no ignorance uh, about whatever a person is purchasing, and with the price. The price has to be clear and specified, and whatever you're purchasing has to be clear and specified and mentioned and no doubt whatsoever, no ignorance about it whatsoever. And the third condition is أَنْ يَكُونَ الْعَاقِلُ مَالِكًا لِلشَّيْءٍ أَوْ مَأْذُونًا لَهُ فِيهِ وَهُوَ بَالِغُ الرَّشِيدِ That Al-Aqid, the one that is selling something, he has to be مَالِكًا لِلشَّيْءٍ He has to be مَالِك, he has to be owning whatever he's selling. Or he has been given the permission to sell on someone's behalf. Right? And that's what they call selling by proxy. I don't know if you heard that terminology before. Wakil. Right? He would make a wakala, that means he is given the permission, whether they make it in a, some uh, authority or so on, that so and so, uh, with his name, whatever identification there is, he has the rights to sell anything I have, I have or he has the right to sell that one particular thing, uh, and so on. So he has to be owner, or he is given the permission to sell, and he is bad, that means he reached the age of puberty, and he is rashid, meaning that he has sound mind. He's, in, you know, he's not a crazy person or insane. And the issue of al uh, that he has to reach the age of puberty, unless it's something easy and cheap and simple. For example, you send your son to uh, purchase something, right? A gum or a gut or a candy or something. He doesn't have to be, okay, well, you know, uh, what's the contract here between both of us? And that's why buying and selling doesn't have to be everything with a contract. And you see the conditions. There's something called al muatab meaning without even saying a word, without saying, without saying, I want to purchase, another side say, I, I gave you this as a good to be purchased. You don't do that to the store. You don't say anything actually sometimes. They, you just give them the thing, they scan it, and get the money out without any word. And that's why you send it. This is, is, is valid because it's different from one culture to the other. And if people perceive it as buying and selling and the matter is so clear, it can be from a child doing this and no problem. Unless the child did something that doesn't look very decent, buying something with a lot of money, where did he get this money from? But if it's something easy and simple, then it's okay. That's why they buy only for booty, it's another issue. Someone that buys something that he really doesn't have the rights to, to sell it. What if it happened? 
Does the other side says, well, I purchased it, I paid the money and everything. But it, he doesn't have the right to sell it. So the, the transaction is not valid. It has to be returned, right? And so on. So these are the first uh, three conditions. And there are more conditions to come, but just to, because the second condition is zero. So, you know, take it easy this time, inshallah. So if you have any questions related to these uh, things or, or some of the examples, maybe, uh, we can try to discuss it. Sheikh, back overseas, um, there is a Naqab al Muhandisi. What they do, they like purchase a mountain and uh, they will uh, sell it for the employees or the participant uh, in that uh, particular company. And they will all pay the same price. Mm -hmm. But in the end, after everything has been purchased, they will make a pra, uh and everyone will take the land that it comes in his name. It might come in the top of the mountain, which is the best, or in a valley, which is the worst. Mm -hmm. And uh, the value of the, the land will increase and decrease about that. Well, I would these things definitely with the details of it because with the questions of specific case, it can have more specifications that we're not aware of. So we can talk only in general. Mm. But people with regards to that specific case, they should ask the person of knowledge with that specific company with that, about that specific case because it's probably not something small, something big. Mm. I'm just saying that. Why? Because usually the big things, if, you're, if a person is asking about something called an Islamic bank, its name is such and such. They do this and this and that, is it halal or haram? You should ask a fatwa from a alim, trustworthy one, of course with the knowledge and the sunnah and everything, about that particular bank, right? Not that, that you understood from the bank that they do this, so you explain it to the alim, the alim will tell you, according to the question, maybe yes, no problem. But the bank would have more things, right, that in blueprints and things like that, that's why the alim or the 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 hay'a or whatever the institutions of the ulama they would study this bank and its contracts and the blueprints and and everything and what it's based on and then they would give a verdict that dealing with this bank is permissible it does not have any thing against matters of sharia and so on. so the same thing if in a country you know an institution is doing this that should be specifically mentioned but in general. Uh, it depends, you have to define the relationship between the two sides. If the two sides, for example, the Khabat and Mansi, engineering, uh, institution, whatever, and the people that are being partner, partners in this, right? So partnership can be applied in this. People, ten people, for example, they get together to purchase a piece of land. So they're partners in the piece of land. They don't have to be specifically, I have from this point to this point, and you from this. So they're all sharing the whole land like this mm -hmm. as a company or as, a, as partners. Then after that, they divide among themselves, you know, the, the, the piece of the land, no problem. They can do it by drawing lots, they can see which is area is better so that would give them more price or not. They can decide among themselves and there's no problem. So this is, if it's like this, mm -hmm. there's no harm, there's no deception. But if it's a, 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 a sign that is selling to the people, Right? And the person is purchasing and he just doesn't know what he's purchasing. He's just purchasing part of a huge piece of land. And then later on we'll give you the, the, your, your lot and it might be a very bad place or a very good place. Allah will bless, then this is a this is deception. So if it's buying and selling and it's not just helping their people, then it's different. So the wording can be changed. So originally you cannot buy you cannot go to this institution, institution and will tell you, uh, I want a piece of land in this huge piece of land. Uh, and, and they just take your money without knowing where, where, which place you're buying and what area. Because unless they're all the same and exactly the same, with all the conditions are the same, then it's okay. So the difference is partnership yeah. or, or buying the same? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, okay. You know, and, uh, and I guess the biggest problem is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. For example, I cannot drive the car without having some sort of insurance, or I cannot practice medicine without having malpractice insurance. You know, so there are so many yeah. restrictions. Good question. 
uh, with insurance, for example, sometimes the laws of the land that you have to have insurance for cars, liability insurance. You cannot drive unless you have it. Uh, for a doctor, yes, have to practice insurance. So what do you do in this? All right, I say this is then becomes permissible, right? I'm talking about the, the rulings of the contract itself. It's not permissible to all based on deception. Yeah. But for something like that is a necessity that people cannot live their life without it, then it is permissible to be part of this contract, but you don't go beyond that. So you do whatever is minimum requirement by the government or the state and so on. And uh, when it comes to being benefiting from the insurance, you only benefit from what you paid, if it happened. So for example, if it's only liability insurance, you won't get anything anyway, because it's for the other side. But for, uh, say for example, you're forced, you cannot do anything unless you, say, uh, just for the sake of the example, unless you have full coverage. Say that becomes mandatory to have full coverage insurance on your car. Then you have to pay every month, whatever the full coverage. Then something happened to your car, right? And you can take from the insurance company, uh, not everything, but you can just take what you gave. So you can calculate, I've been paying for four years now, and something happened to the car, so I paid $4,000, right? And whatever the insurance company, they would say you're entitled for 10000 6000 is not your rights, you didn't pay 6000 But you can take what is worth the 4000 in that case. Uh, so, uh, but as far as going into this contract, well, it's not permissible, if it's something that is mandatory by the law, that's why I say there's no harm in this case.